Hey everybody, it's Chris Demetric here from TDW and I had a request recently to do a quick video on the process I use to prepare uh, skateboard bearings for fidget toys. I've got a few uh, fidget toys here. I got a uh, you know finger spinners or hand spinners. Uh, I think there's a challenge going out right now so I just wanted to show the process I do when I get these. When you order them sometimes they'll come if you get the higher end ones in a case like this with the bearings in there. Um, or you might get them like I do. I buy them by the bulk, so I get them in these tubes of uh, of uh, bearings. These are 608 bearings, and uh, well, you know they come packed in grease, so it really they don't f spin freely. So for you know a better quality spin, a faster, longer, smoother spin, you want to make sure that you prepare these and just don't pop them in the way you get them because. It doesn't spin very long. So uh, let me show you the products I use and the techniques I use to prepare the bearing so it can spin the longest. Okay, so um, some of the things that I use is acetone or mineral spirits to get the uh, remnants of the grease out of there. You'll need your bearings and uh, the you know, any small screwdriver will work, but I like to use these little uh, I know these little mini screwdrivers, they work really well, they got a good handle. As a matter of fact, I got that one at Harbor Freight, I got a whole set of them for like six bucks. Um, something to open up the cans with, and then what really helps is a nice heavy block. I got this piece of ash that I have that um, I like to put it on, but let me show you the technique. You just want to make sure you have some, some lube to clean it up. The WD-40 is traditionally what people use. Once it's done, I hit it with a little PV blaster. They make a garage door spray lubricant, and it works really, really well. And it'll last a long time, and it doesn't pick up a lot of gook. And uh, but let me show you what I do. So what you're going to do is once you get a staple, you're going to push down on it first to kind of make a void there, because so they're not easily popped out. And then try to get your screwdriver underneath the kind of crack in the void there, and it should pop up. Now one side will have grease on it and the other side may have uh, like a little bushing of sorts. But just push down on it, get a little twist action and it should pop it right out. And sometimes it's, you struggle with them and it just go on to a different side and you'll get, you'll, get, you'll get them all out. It just takes a little bit of practice sometimes. And there we go. First one is done. Now we still got to get the grease out of there because it's caked in there. You can see it on there. Um, but we just want to get those uh, the uh, covers off so we can get into the grease. All right, here's a little closer view, and you just push down on it and then get that under. And after you do a couple of them, you'll you'll get them pretty quickly. And you can see that bushing in there. And the other side, like I say, you kind of get the hang of it. That's why I do a bunch of them all at once. Don't keep working on it. Just twist it over and do the other side. It should pop up a lot easier. Alright, so you cracked them open, now they're filled with grease. I got all three of them ready to go, and let me show you how to get that grease out of there. You know, any container will work well for you. I find that if I use these spray can lids, they kind of pop in there nicely. What I'll do is I'm going to with some acetone, and um, then just let it set. We'll give it a uh, swirl all around and give it 15-20 minutes, let it get a chance for it to really break down the grease in there. All right, once you get them out of there, just wipe them down real well, and we're going to go over and get the air compressor to spray out what grease is remaining in there. Yeah, so in half speed, you can really see all of the grease flying out of there. So once you repeat this with some WD-40, um, just lubricate it whichever way you want. Again, I'm using this uh, PV blaster. Uh, and then clean them all up and they're going to be ready to be installed in the actual spinners. 
And you can use whatever technique you uh, you like to install them. I always use this little vise. It, it works well with getting them all flush with the uh, spinner, whether you're doing PLA or ABS or even uh, wood or steel. Uh, the vise works well. And this one is uh, has some bearings that I put in the center, but then I also put some big steel ball bearings just so it can spin really well. It's a nice fast spinner. And then the last one, which I think is one of my favorites, is the ones that have the the nuts on there and uh, that spins and for a while. All right so the end result was I made three of them and a uh, traditional two-sided one and I just again 3D printed you can a lot of people are making these out of wood and steel and there's just different ways of doing them. Uh, this one has got the ball bearings on there so it's weighted and it does spin up quite a long time. I like this one a lot it's just got the nuts on there and it spins pretty cool but again if you're thinking about making them whether you're doing woodworking steel work whatever you might do you got a 3d printer um, that's the way I prepare the um, the 608 uh, skateboard bearings for my finger spinners or hand spinners or fidget toys or whatever you want to call them thanks for watching this is Chris Demetric from TDW and See you on the flip side.